Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter, everybody. Welcome to Gospel on the Go this Easter Sunday morning. I'm so glad you're with me. You survived Holy Week. You survived the season of Lent. And here we are in this glorious and incredible season of Easter. I'm glad you're still with me. Um, just praising God that we have our community here online and that we can share in this beautiful day together. So today our morning prayer again is from the Book of Alternative Services. And if you'd like to follow along, if you have one, we'll begin on page 47. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Now, in the Easter season, rather than using the Veneti or the Jubilate, we use an anthem called Christ Our Passover, which is a culmination of bringing together of passages from 1 Corinthians and Romans. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. O come, let us worship. Our gospel lesson this morning, or today, is taken from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. And this is my favorite, my absolute favorite of the Easter Gospels. Chapter 20 of, of the Gospel of John, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. 
Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are again. The church looks splendid. My office doesn't look so splendid, but trust me, the cathedral looks splendid. The congregation gathered in the church had a new feeling of a new energy and hope and excitement. Once again, we find ourselves back in the land of the living. After a long Lent, we're back where it feels like we should have been all along. Easter has come. Jesus has risen. Alleluia. On this of all days, it is so appropriate, so very right that we should feel refreshed, rejuvenated, and ready to begin again. This is the day for new life. This is the time for taking on new challenges and opening ourselves up to the immense possibilities that God has set before us. We have gathered to celebrate what we have been waiting for, awaiting for six long weeks, the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead, his rebirth, and his gift to us of eternal life. Finally, we can sing songs of upbeat praise and ring out our alleluias. At last, we can share that which is most natural to us as Christians, our joy in God's love, our faith in the Holy Spirit's constant guidance and direction and our absolute and overwhelming acceptance as children of God because of our brother, Jesus Christ, who also is our Savior. We have survived that season of Lent when we are expected to look deep inside and take a personal inventory of our lives to see what we need to work on to come into better relationship with God. However, now we are in that most glorious of seasons, Easter. And while we should still be keeping a close watch on our continued spiritual growth and walk with God, we can also focus our attention on the tremendous freedom and lightness of heart that comes in knowing that Jesus Christ loves us so much that he has given us the free gift of salvation and eternal life. As I walked through the almost surreal quiet of Holy Week, I was struck by my feeling of duty. While I could fully understand why I needed to attend services every day, and while I could feel within my soul the need to experience the harsh reality of the passion of Christ, I found myself frustrated by what seemed to be a lack of options. There was much that I had to do in Lent. I had to take on a Lenten discipline. I had to attend the Lenten services. I had to dig, dig deeper into my soul and come face to face with those parts of myself that I tend to tuck away. Those things of which, well, I may not be ashamed, I still don't like to look directly at on a regular basis. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm glad that the season of Lent brought all of those musts and had tos. If I didn't have a prescribed time, during which I was called to look inside, I know myself well enough to know that I could easily be distracted into dealing with other more practical matters. I've always found Lent to be a difficult but meaningful season, one in which most of my spiritual growth occurs, and for that I am most grateful. However, during that season of introspection, it always feels as though my hands are tied. They're not, but that's how I perceive it to be. Then comes the lighting of the lights at the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday night. And all of a sudden, my soul fills up with the wonder of possibilities. Just as that first robin seen in the backyard announces that spring is on her way, so too does the sound of that first Alleluia, Christ is risen, announce that a new time has begun, an era full of possibilities, new hope, and fulfilled expectations. Great is the sound of the bell that, tell, that tolls the good tidings, that the bonds of death and the ties of all that is not good have been broken. Not only has a new day dawned on this holiest of feast days, a new chance has been given, but an opportunity also to choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior has been granted. 
the opportunity for choice is opened up to us this day in ways that we can only imagine. From this moment on, every moment of every day is an opportunity for each and every one of us to choose Christ, to choose to live as Easter people, to choose life over death, hope over despair, joy over sorrow. On this day, we have been given the gift of new and eternal life, and we have been given the gift of sharing that life with others. In Lent, we, took time, we take time to look within ourselves, to listen to God calling us out, whispering or hollering to us, as the case may be, what it is that we have need of, what growth we need to take so that we might become more faithful and faithful Christians. And now, in this glorious season of Easter, we are called to look outside of ourselves, to reach out to others with the good news that not only is Jesus Christ risen from the dead, but he is back in the land of the living and ready to search out all those whom, he ha we ha whom have not yet been found. The best part of his resurrection and our celebration of that event is that you and I have been given the significant role of becoming heralds of the good news. It isn't enough that we just celebrate that Christ is risen. We have to go out into the world and tell others the good news. And good news it is, the best. And you and I have the awesome privilege of being commissioned by God to go out into the world and letting everyone know about it. In our gospel lesson this morning, we heard about Mary standing at the empty tomb wondering where Jesus might have been taken. Little did she know that the man she mistook to be the gardener was indeed her friend and her risen Lord. For what a reason, Jesus chose Mary Magdalene to take on a new role on that first Easter morning. She became the first apostle. Mary was the first person Jesus chose to both reveal himself to and to set out into the world sharing the good news of all that Christ stands for. Mary is for all of us an example of that which we are called to become. God has asked us to first go to the empty tomb. We have lived through the season of Lent. We have faithfully attended worship, prayed for forgiveness, allowed God to lead us on a journey deeper into our own souls, and we have been led on that journey to an empty tomb. What we thought we would find is not there. What we have found instead is a brand new thing, an unexpected outcome. The Jesus we thought we would find is not there. Indeed, there is a different Jesus standing in his place. We have come on our Lenten journey like Mary Magdalene and ended up before an empty tomb. And if we feel a little unsure of how we should feel, then all is right with the world. The empty tomb, the realization that Jesus may not simply be only what we imagined him to be, is a good thing. As a matter of fact, it's a fantastic thing. The truth of the Easter event lies in the fact that what should be predictable is not because God loves us enough to do for us that which is outrageous, unbelievable, and undeserved. After God leads us to the empty tomb, we, like Mary, should stand with mouth agape, wondering what in the world is going on. This resurrection of Jesus is not something that we can actually understand. For 2,000 years, scholars have been trying to analyze and dissect it, and all with the same outcome. No matter how much we understand what actually happened, we are still left with the mystery of unknowing. It is in that mystery that our Christian faith resides. As we stand at that empty tomb, wondering what in the world is going on, we are standing on holy ground. We are standing in front of the greatest mystery of all, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, in whom we place our trust and our hope. Like Mary Magdalene, we stand in shock, in awe, and in overwhelming hope. Jesus is alive, standing before us and asking us to go out and tell others. We have been called to witness firsthand that empty tomb, to stand before it in wonderment and awe, and last, but certainly not least, we are called to share the good news with others. 
with Mary Magdalene, we are named as apostles of Christ. And it is that naming that we are called to this day. When we stand and confess our faith in the risen Lord, when we come forward to receive communion for those of us who are in church at, at the Lord's table, when we leave the church and go back to, out into the world, when we leave our TVs, our computers, and go back out into the world, we will do so with Mary, proclaiming to all whom we meet that the one in whom we have placed our trust, the one from whom we have learned how to love, is alive and well, and making sure that we are too. We have some choices to make. We can choose to close our eyes and stand our ground, not moving toward the destination to which God calls us. Or we can open our eyes and follow the path God lays out before us that leads directly to that empty tomb. We can choose to be fearful and skeptical of the empty tomb. Or we can stand in awe and wonder at the miracle that caused it to be empty in the first place. We can choose not to recognize Christ as he stands risen before us. Or we can call out his name like Mary, joyful that he has chosen to reveal himself to us. We can stand and keep silent, holding for ourselves the good news his resurrection brings. Or we can go out into the world sharing it and letting others into the, the worst kept but most powerful secret in the world that Jesus Christ died, that all who believe in him may be forgiven their sins, and that he rose from the dead so that all may share an eternal life with him. We have many choices laid out before us. Some are easy, some are difficult. We all know which choices we should make. So let's support each other and make the best decisions we can. After all, if it hadn't been for the decision of another to allow himself to hang on the cross, None of us would be here today. Even our most tough decisions won't be that taxing. Let's choose well. It's the least we can do in response to God's tremendous generosity and grace through his son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. as we as we pray this day as we as we celebrate who we are as christians the gift that jesus has given us of eternal life that we celebrate at this on this easter day we it's appropriate that we would share the words of the apostles creed the words that we share at every baptism in the anglican church so together if you've got a book i invite you to turn to page 52 we'll share the words these words together i believe in god the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was cru crucified, died, and was bur buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our, our litany for today is the litany for Easter which can be found on page, in the green book, on page 122, I believe. Yes, page 122. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power, wars and famine may cease throughout all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. And we pray the collect for Easter Day. Lord of life and power, through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin, be alive and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with you him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all for joining in, for being with me as we celebrate Easter here on Gospel on the Go. Um, I'm, I've had to make the decision about how things will go now that I'm a bishop <laughs> um, and have a few extra responsibilities. Um, for Church at Home and Gospel on the Go. And what I've had, the decision I've had to make, unfortunately, is that I can't keep up the pace I'm going. So there will be a Church at Home whenever I'm at home. If I'm going to be around, there will be a Church at Home. And if I'm in a parish in the, within the diocese on a Sunday, then there will be a Gospel on the Go. But when I'm out of town, um, no, not when I'm out of town, when I'm out of the diocese and unable to um, publish and record, record and publish these, then there won't be one. So next Sunday, on the 7th, 6th, 7th, whatever the, the Sunday is, I can't remember, it might be the 6th, um, I will be in Toronto for Provincial House of Bishops and then heading for, um, heading for House of Bishops in Niagara Falls for National House of Bishops for, for the rest of the week. So there won't be a church at home um, from fri this coming Friday until a week later, the Monday. So Friday to Friday, the Monday after. Um, there will be one on the 15th of April. Um, and there won't be a gospel on the go for the 7th, or the, sorry, the 6th of April, but there will be one for the 13th or whatever the Sunday might be. So I have no idea what the dates are, so bear with me. There won't be a gospel on the go next week, but there will be in two weeks. And there will be a church at home Monday through Thursday this coming week, but there won't be for Friday and the following week after that. And I'm going to try my best to, to stick with the plan that if I'm in the diocese within the province of Manitoba, there will be a church at home or gospel on the go. If I am away, there won't be. So we'll see how that works. I hope you stick with me. I'm glad you're here. God bless you and happy Easter. I'm so glad that we have our church at home and gospel on the go communities. You give me you give me great, great hope and you bring me great peace. God bless you all.